Mr. Rickles. The, the man works in a, in a closet, for Christ's sake. <laughs> Mr. Rickles, you don't have to give me a copy of your book. I'm already reading but it. But there's something in here about it to, that oh, you should read. Thank you. All right, I will read it. Uh, Don Rickles wrote a book. Yes. Don Rickles is my hero. Wait a minute. I'm, I'm, what am I getting? Gary, leave him alone. <laughs> the hell is it? Let him, let him sit working. down. What are you doing to him? Uh, <laughs> you hung out with Sinatra, Carson, all the big names. And did you feel you were at a low point in your life <laughs> when you had to do Artie's movie? No. Dirty work. This is. <laughs> <laughs> John Stamos told me for years that he was friendly with you, and I'm going to be honest with you. you I didn't, didn't believe, believe him for a minute. <laughs> like, why would a guy of your intellectual ability yeah, my intellectual. And, and your com comedic ability, why would you... What do you see in What do you see in him? Because he's around for you to well, see. He says, he says he wants to meet a wife, the girl, and settle down, but every time we go to dinner, Howard, it's, it's no joke. I mean, he really, they come over to the table and they're going, John, you'll call me for and I said, what is that, Chuck? <laughs> nothing, nothing. I know nothing. I just want to have a nice meal and meet a nice girl. Oh, Does he goodness. tell you about his sex life? Does no, 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 no. No, he doesn't. No, he's very, very quiet about Are that. Are you jealous of his sex life ever? No, no, I had my chances. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, uh, when I was his age, I wasn't laying around in the house with a Mormon book in my hand. When I read your book, Don, the Don Rickles book, yeah. and I'm reading it right now, you paint yourself as a loser with women early on in your life. You know, uh, you know why? And I think maybe, I don't know if you had that problem when you were a young man. Well, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think my problem what are you was? Being kind? You look like a Jew Zulu. That's what you look like. <laughs> now, the greatest moment in that movie that you did with Artie is when you, I think you ad-libbed it, you turned to him and you said... <laughs> so there you are, Tubby. Ah, you look like a bucket of lard on a bad day. You baby gorilla. Why don't you work a zoo and stop bothering people? Got a call yesterday from Baskin Robbins. They said that they're down to only five flavors. You're swelling up as I talk to you. You, look at you, you baby gorilla. <laughs> <laughs> and, I mean, and you he, talk to the Baskin and Robbins yeah. in his stomach. Yeah. I love that. You address, Unbelievable. You address the food in his stomach, which I thought was a stroke of genius. <laughs> look at you. How's this? How's it doing? <laughs> Hello, ice cream. Having a good time? <laughs> Running around? <laughs> Uh, I love that. And, Artie, that was your single greatest moment. When well, it's my, the greatest moment in the history of my career. I not only told it on this show, I said the first time I ever do the David Letterman show, I'm going to get the segment producer in a headlock if he doesn't let me tell that story first. So I've told it here, and I've told it on Letterman. It's, uh, it it's is a classic. The, it's, it's just, I got to be on the screen with one of the, the legends, man. Why are, you, why are you hollering up here? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're a little older. <laughs> The first day of shooting, we have to work with the great Don Rickles. Tremendous. Okay. Just tremendous. Now, that's good and bad. I'm happy to meet him, but I'm afraid I'm just going to bust out laughing because Don Rickles, coincidentally enough, plays a guy who insults me and Norm. <laughs> <laughs> it's typecasting. And uh, they give Don a bunch of lines to learn, and that's a mistake. Mm -hmm. You know, he's a master at it. So finally, he couldn't really remember the lines. They say, Don, look, look at Norm and Artie, look at these two schlubs, and just insult them <laughs> off the top of your head. <laughs> so this is the first shot of the movie, and I got Don Rickles about to insult me. So uh, they yell action. The great Bob Saget directed the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Don, uh, Don had just finished Casino with Scorsese, yeah. and he went up to Saget, and he said, Bob, listen, I was talking to Martin Scorsese. I said, Marty, Bob Saget's directing a film. The man grabbed his chest. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think about my motivation and everything, you know. Right. If you're, like, you're working with De Niro 20 minutes, he's got to go in the closet to figure out why. <laughs> why, why did I draw the gun? Why did I... <laughs> Why did I fire the pistol? Why? Uh, and I did say, Bob, huh? it's Thursday. Fire the gun. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Enough of that actor bullshit. Right. Right. So uh, then he gets, Rickles gets the norm. He's laughing, so they had to write him a line. He goes, what are you laughing at? Because I called your friend the fat pig. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Because I called your friend the fat pig, huh? You think that's funny? Oh, no, I was just laughing uh, earlier when you were talking to his belly. Did you get a horse and live in the mountains someplace and don't bother anybody? Got a personality like a dead moth. <laughs> and then Norm goes, no, I was just laughing when you were talking to his belly. So while we're filming in the movie, he goes to Norm, he goes, how did you get a movie? <laughs> and Saget goes, Saget being a brilliant director, goes, cut. 
Don, you can't insult them as Norm Macdonald. <laughs> That's not going to work, you know. He's, we can't put it in the film. His, his name is Mitch in the film. Insult Mitch. So Rickles goes, all right. And the next thing he goes, he goes, look at you. He goes, he goes, who wrote this script? These jokes are horrible. <laughs> Cut, Don, don't insult the script. <laughs> we can't use it. So anyway, it was 18 hours of that. At the end of the day, I went up to him. I said, Mr. Rickles, it was a pleasure working with you. <laughs> and uh, he looked at me and he said, listen, I was watching you all day. And listen, let me tell you something. Good luck working construction. <laughs> You spent a lot of time in your book on Sinatra. I mean, you really love this guy. Uh, very much so. Yeah, he People can't you. figure it out. People can't figure it out. <laughs> yeah. why, he, why, did he, why did he not have you killed? I mean, you would say terrible, terrible <laughs> things about him. I don't understand it. Because my manager at the time had other guys that could kill him. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. But uh, you tell that great story. I mean, you probably told it a million times. But, you do, you, but in the book, you, you write it very, very well. Well, thank you. The whole uh, Sinatra story about when you you know you your dating wasn't going so great yeah. you finally get a date with a girl <laughs> and then you're there at the club in Las Vegas you're eating dinner and uh, the girl turns and says I see Frank Sinatra over there do you think you could introduce me to Frank Sinatra and you did the most brilliant thing in the world listen can I tell a story about sure. what this man did to me once you may have known or heard about this it was a true story this is a long time ago long before Don got married I was eating dinner in a restaurant in New York, and uh, uh, I was sitting with, with some friends, and he came over to the table, and he said, Frank, do me a favor, will you? He said, I'm sitting with a very pretty girl, and uh, I'm trying to make out, you know, and he said, I told her I know you, and she really doesn't believe me. Would you stop by the table? I said, all right. I was just about finished. I was down to the espresso, and I wa finally he went back, and I walked by the table, and I said, how are you, Don? Nice to see you. He said, can't you see I'm eating, Frank? What are you doing? <laughs> I went for the whole thing. You I stood with my mouth open. All the security was around. I said, Psst, Frank, can I talk to you a minute? And he said, there's Bullethead. He called me Bullethead. <laughs> so he said, there's Bullethead. What is it? I said, Frank, if you could come over a couple of minutes and just say hi to me with the girl. It would skyrocket me. And <laughs> I got a good shot at a home run, you know? He right. said, you got it. But don't come over right away. So I went back, and I was giving her that cheap champagne, and we were going, to you, my darling, and her lips were dancing, and, you know, my body was <laughs> twingling, you know. And I tried to be cool, and I said, sweetheart, I just, don't worry about it, boom. And she said, look who's coming. And he, he, Frank struts over, had on this beautiful blazer in those days with, a, with an ascot, you know, he goes, Don, how are you? And I got up, I went, not now, Frank, can't you see I'm with somebody? <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't hit you. <laughs> He thought that he was good. He laughed his ass off, but he had the security guys lift me over their heads and carry me out of the casino. <laughs> the greatest story ever. Sure.